hello and welcome back to You Had Me at Eat, everyone. I'm Erica. And I'm Jules. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. What was that? That was a lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't I don't know what time zone I'm in. I don't know what day it is. I'm kinda like Yeah. I I just I got back sometime at some point recently from um from Paris. And so yeah, I'm I'm still recovering, but how long is that flight, Jules? Well, I think it could have been faster, but we went through Dublin. So not recommended, but that was that was the cheapest way to get there. <laughs> Did you actually get to hang out in Ireland? Yeah, I all? wish. I wish. I mean it wasn't it was like the worst way of doing it where you had like the long layover in the Dublin airport, but it wasn't long enough to leave and go do anything. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And there's nothing to eat in the Dublin airport for someone like me. Um, so that was fine. But, but the good part was on the way back, they have this new thing um, where you can go through customs in Dublin. And so when you land in the U.S., oh, yeah. it's just like a domestic flight. We just got off our plane and went and got our bags. That was actually, yeah, I like that. That was nice. Hmm. I like that a lot. And that's, um, I don't know when they instituted that, but Dublin is one of the few places in the world that has that now where U.S. Um, Customs and Border Patrol is in the Dublin airport. Yeah. Would not was, have guessed that. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't an option. They were like, you, there, go. And and it worked out really well. I mean, but, but we had just enough time to do that and then get on the airplane. So luckily, I pack a lot of protein bars with me when I travel. So that yeah, was what was I ate like all day. Uh, was that like a 10 hour flight? No, no it was it's like a it, nine hour flight, eight hour flight. No, it was, it was supposed to be like seven or something from Dublin, but mm -hmm. we had some incredible tailwinds, which was bizarre because that doesn't normally happen that way. And we, it, it ended up being only like six hours on the way from Dublin. Um, mm. and, I forget because you're on the East coast. That would have added an additional yes. four yes. hours yeah. to yeah. my flight, which yeah. is why I don't tend to really go. Anyway, yeah, that would be rough. That, that sucks. That, that would be rough. Um, yeah. Um, that's like us on the East Coast going to Asia. That's the worst. Or Hawaii. It's just so far. Oh, Hawaii. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, I love Hawaii. Don't get me wrong. But like, yeah. I mean, you got to go to California, hang out for a bit. And Stay a day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make a day of it. Go to <laughs> Disney like, World. It's too Land. bad. It's just too long. But yeah. No, I mean, I, and I love it. You know, just travel. Like, I love when you get there, but it's just the brutality of getting there that's so. Ugh. But I have so much to share about that, like the whole yes. like, like gluten free in in France and um, and everything. So stay tuned for next week's episode on You Had Me at Eat. Can you at least share like one thing that you loved eating? Um, <laughs> surprisingly enough, Paris had a plethora of gluten free Italian food. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, I had some great Italian food in Paris. Who knew? Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Hey, and it was, it was, it was quite tasty. So, um, I but found did you some guys, good stuff. you guys had fun though, right? I mean, of at course least. we did, but it was just, it was, ne I mean, we walked like eight miles a day and, yeah. you know, did not sit down. And I mean, I have blisters that would make you cringe um mm. so yeah <laughs> jeff said to me yesterday he's like i cannot follow you i cannot look at your heels any longer it's disgusting <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, were, we were like barefoot like in the yard i was doing some yard work or something he's like i can't look at your heels paris yeah. man paris get you yeah yeah no it was it was very it was fun it was um you know i've been there have you been to paris no oh that's right i forgot you don't live on the east coast <laughs> No, I mean, I've been there um, a few times, not recently, but um, so I've seen the highlights before all the things you're supposed to have to see when you go to Paris. Um, but it was it was fun to see it through the eyes of young girls who had never been there because it was we were with my daughter and my goddaughter. And that was fun. That was that was the best part for me was just getting to experience it through their eyes and the wonder of of all of those sights, you know, seeing yeah. it. That was yeah. really neat. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that's awesome. Fun. Yeah, so now that you're back, uh, let's mm-hmm. dive into what's upcoming. Well, wait, 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 wait. What did you do while I was gone? Did you miss me? We got. I absolutely did nothing. Oh. Uh, just hung out with the cats. Like you were bored. You know, what nothing did happened. I do? Yeah. No, what did you I do? Mean, I, uh, my girlfriend owns a venue. We've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. It's the mocktail venue. Um, there was a, uh, she does these storytelling times. So I did a storytelling about menopause. It was good times. They also had a quinceanera open house. So I got to. Did you um, wear a big poofy dress? No, but I got to see a quinceanera fashion show. Ooh. It was a lot. I bet it was a lot. It was very fun. There are lots of beads and glitter. It was great. Um, so I don't know, man. It was, uh, I am really, really busy at work and like really struggling emotionally again. I was doing really well for like several weeks. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just like kind of in that part of like anxiety and depression again and it's kind of a bummer and I didn't want to bring anyone down because she just went to Paris so I don't <laughs> want to talk about just like I'm having trouble sleeping and I'm yeah. having trouble um at night it's when Reishi you start mushrooms I'll, I'm taking every girl I'm taking everything the other night I could sleep I'm totally 100% serious reishi mushroom powder so there is this thing that I take called um, cortisol manager and it has like mm-hmm. ashwagandha and l yeah. and all the things. And it's really, really great, but you have to take it like early enough to where if not, you get hung over. So basically I've been like really poorly managing when I take things at night and then I'll be hung over the next day. And then it's just miserable because then I'll nap and yeah. then I'll not sleep. And so I'm yeah. just like in this really bad sleeping habit. And um, my, so my sleep hygiene down, mm. my life down. Mm. Um, and so like, nothing's really like, I just need to jump out of this, you know? Right. And I know that I will, but yeah. right now it's kind of like, and the weather right now in Phoenix, is it like too hot to go outside? Yeah. It's like a hundred today. And so like oh. I do, I go out in the morning down. and I do some, like, <laughs> I do some like morning yoga and stuff, mm-hmm. whatever. And I try to like get a little bit of like natural vitamin D, but I don't know, man, it's just wild. It's just, and so I'm taking a lot more fitness classes, trying to like get my endorphins up yeah. and move and all that stuff. But then like, sometimes my body's like, Hey, that's enough movement because you have to yeah. realize that you have to like have limits on movement too and mm-hmm. then i'm like no 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 but i need the endorphins mm-hmm. you know and may then I my body's suggest, like whoa may i suggest cupcakes may i suggest uh we i may have overdone it i <laughs> yesterday i got a pint of my favorite sorbet mm. and normally the pint will last a couple days and i ate it all at night like an entire pint and i felt horrible so well um i'm not maybe... really good during these times <laughs> of like depression yeah. to regulate mm-hmm. i'm like yes this increases my mood let's do a lot of it so like the other night to sleep i took like two big xanax and i'm just like woke up and all whoa yeah i slept great but like whoa <laughs> the next day not so great well yeah. um so we just did a, um, I, I, I participated in a giveaway, um, like the week before I left for Paris and it was with a few different brands and I w- was introduced to a brand that I had never had before. And you and I chatted about it and you were experienced with this brand. Um, but I really, really liked them speaking of frozen, um, things that are too yummy. Um, it was green girl. Yeah. I actually went out to buy it. So, yeah. um, yeah. So you said that and I'm like, oh my God, I love them. And then I mm-hmm. remembered there was only one place in all of Arizona that stocks it. And so I went there and I bought, um, two of the Rishi mushroom chocolate and two of the, um, golden turmeric ice cream sandwiches. They're amazing. So they're paleo ice cream sandwiches. It's um, turmeric. Turmeric. <laughs> Tumor. <laughs> it's not anyway, tumor. I literally no tumor in Matt turmeric. Said was, Matt said it was oh turmeric, God. and I'm like, it's not a tumor. <sighs> so we have this conversation. Um, so, Adrian. 
<laughs> we got it and we <laughs> ate it and it was delicious. Yes. Okay. And so it's very, very delicious and vegan. And so that makes me happy. But it also has the reishi in it. And I was starting mm-hmm. to tell you, reishi will help you to sleep. How There's many all these- ice cream? How many ice cream sandwiches do I need in order to actually sleep? So you, know? you can have the ice cream. You can have the reishi. You're going to be like set. Um, I don't know. I've never measured the amount of reishi in an ice cream sandwich from Green Girl, but I'm sure we could ask them. I um, I take reishi mushroom powder um, either in, in capsules or just the mm-hmm, actual mm-hmm, powder mm-hmm. you can start into your drink. Um, I actually I have some mushroom powder in my in my drink right now and not reishi because I will go take a nap. Um, I don't need that right now. No. um, It's, let me, I have to get the pronunciation right, but it's Malama mushrooms. I think it's Malama, Malama mushroom. Malama. (laughs) Malama. It's, it's from Hawaii and I'm, yeah, it's it's amazing. I love this brand. I met them at Expo, and they're so fun. I love these people, but they're gonna hate me because I'm probably pronouncing their name wrong. I think it's like a, you know, it's a name from it's it's a word from you know like Polynesian. <laughs> I'm gonna it pronounce like it in the in your, your whole Franco little deeper, file, um, like I did with the llama, um, with the um, maison cache. <laughs> I'm going to just butcher it, but I know I love this brand. It's M-A-L-A-M-A. M-A-L-A-M-A. Malama. And are they, do they do capsules too? Um, No, they do the powder. And Mm. then um, there's another brand and I'll have to look it up and and get the name for you. I think it's called Real Mushrooms does the capsules. And um, anyway, they're, they're also really great, but this, um, Malama is, I love them and they have, <clears throat> they have these powders, lion's mane, which is mm-hmm. really good mm-hmm. for your brain, um, reishi, cordyceps, chaga, and then they have like a, a super, um, mixture as well. And you can stir it into your coffee or you can, um, you know, stir it into tea or, or whatever, um, or just or make it, they, or take mm-hmm. capsules, but they also, they have some that's mixed with cocoa already oh, yeah. and it yeah. tastes really good. Yeah. That's a new thing too, that Ohm's doing and my whole foods, they're right. everywhere right now. But well, yeah, they so, also but the, the difference cocoa. there is that this brand, it's not grown and now we're going to go down this rabbit hole yep. again, but like, it's not grown on the oats that, um, and others have, this is just the pure mushroom. So, you know, for people who are a little concerned about that. So anyway, um, it's could, too early in the morning on on. for me to talk about growth <laughs> media and mushrooms. Yeah. It's a little, yeah. it's a little early, but I will tell you that the reishi actually has really improved my sleep and it's very natural it's, and it's not, it, there's no like psych, psycho issues or anything like that with it. So <laughs> You mean like psychedelics or like psycho? Yes. Okay. Any any psycho issues? No psychedelics. No, no psycho, psycho issues. Nice, no psycho issues. None whatsoever. Yeah, but no, it really it does sort of just helps you to sleep a little bit because I tend to wake up in the middle of the night and I just think of all the work I have left to do and mm-hmm. you know all the things. So maybe you should try it. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'll be a mushroom head, just like you. Our <laughs> little nature Thanks, girl. Thanks, my friend. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Well, anyway. Well, um, so now that you know my <laughs> sob story. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not there to give you a hug. I don't need a hug. I just need a nap. But thank you. Sh- ha- have you tried reishi? <laughs> have you tried hugs? <laughs> No, you, tried, you, said you didn't want one. Have you tried real human interaction? That's right. Have you tried <laughs> personal touching touch. a normal human being? Yeah. Oh Cats man, are great for that. I don't know. It you is got, good. You got a few of those in your life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I took well, a really amazing yoga class last night. It was one of our like elevated flows, mm-hmm. um, and it was just like such a good grounding thing. It was really hard, but like at the end, I'm like, oh my god, it feels so good, and I just want to like capture that moment and bottle it and like live in that moment forever. Does mushroom yeah. do that? <laughs> if you want it to, I don't does, know. Does um, mushroom or human touch provide <laughs> that same feeling? Um, sure. Because I cuddled a cat and it didn't feel anything like that. Um, as they were trying to escape my love. Aw. 
Well, that's a cat thing for sure. Cats, cats will definitely run away when when you want the love, they will run away. When you it's don't true. want it, the love, they're all over your face. That's so, true. That's, that's true. A cat thing. Um, speaking of love, let's talk about Father's Day. Ah. By the way, the birds. Do you own? <laughs> A tree full of birds inside your home. You have shut all the doors and windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I physically Mm -hmm. don't understand how the birds are so loud still. Okay. So we were outside um, two days ago and just, you know, we have, we have birds, as you can hear, lots of birds, all different kinds of birds. And I looked outside and I was like, oh, someone's pet bird got away. (laughs) You can literally, you could see there was like a parakeet in our yard. It was a bright yellow, like buttery yellow bird, not native to this land. <laughs> it was flying around in our backyard, eating from our bird feeder. And then the other native birds chased it off. And I was very sad for it. But it's like, oh, well, I hope he can survive. That budgie's outside. not, yeah, that budgie's not going to do well in the wilds of Baltimore. No. Well, I mean, luckily we're in the suburbs. But yeah, that and that, I hope that budgie can find another friend. But yeah. <laughs> I felt we sad have, for it. We have um, native parrots uh, that are here in Arizona. And um, on our next door, like, at least once a day during the summer, someone's like, oh, my God, I found someone's parrot. And I'm like, no, no. sweetie, that one lives outside. <laughs> so it was so funny because um, I – have you seen the, the Merlin Bird app? No. It's, it's from um, – Cornell University has this app called Merlin oh, Bird yeah, ID. I see, yep. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So the Bird ID app. Yeah. It's really cool. It's a free app. Uh, everyone who's listening, if you are remotely interested in birds, it's so cool. And so I, I've downloaded this bird app and, um, and you have to pick a – like a kit or whatever that you add to it where it's like, these are the birds that are Mm -hmm, in our mm -hmm, area mm -hmm. so that it knows what to listen for. And so of course we did the, this area that we live in like mid Atlantic or whatever. So I put the Merlin bird ID on to see what it said to pick up, you know, this, um, this parakeet or whatever to see what it said. And it, it gave us a few little chirps or whatever. And the Merlin bird ID is like, Oh, that's a Cardinal. It's a Northern Cardinal. (laughs) No, no, no. It's butter yellow parakeet. <laughs> like that's so not native, but that's, that's all it had because that it was the mid Atlantic kit. <laughs> yeah, it's is like, not native. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I know, but this it's, it's always so spot on that, that app is so great, but it was like, I got nothing. You're a red bird. Like, nope, nope, not a red bird. So no. it was very funny. See, we have a giant bush, like a tree bush that is higher than houses and we have birds nonstop mating all year long. They're so loud, even at night there. I don't know what's going on with your house that it sounds like there are birds physically inside by your computer chirping. And there is, there's no sound here. Do you hear birds? Yeah, I do. There's right outside my window, right behind me here. My closed window is my neighbor's house and he has a vent in his house and so i would hate to be him but he has a vent like that goes into his kitchen mm-hmm. that they made in and they have a nest in the vent mm. in his mm. kitchen every year they nest in it and that's what you're hearing is the babies and his wife's like joe you need to get rid of that nest <laughs> like every year and he's like nope i'm not doing it they're so cute they're like 80 yeah. year old couple that live next door <laughs> He won't get rid of the nest. Every year they come back in the nest and it's so loud, but that's what we're hearing. And that's my closed window. So I apologize. That, that is you... wild. It's mm-hmm. it's just so loud. It's so weird to me because we yeah. also have obviously mating birds right now. They're everywhere. They're just like, it's insane. Um, but you don't hear it here. And I'm very worried about your insulation. It looks like new windows. It looks like beautiful new windows. And yet... I feel no, like I'm living these, outside. These old things? No. In fact, we have to get new windows because they're terrible windows. And we are getting new windows. We, we saved up to get new windows because these are awful. I have to, in order just to open for your, these just windows. Just for this podcast. For this. <laughs> <laughs> the bird noise is yeah, too loud. we got to buy new windows, just, Jeff. got to buy new windows. No, it's, in order to open the windows, you have to prop it open with a piece of wood. And like, because they won't stay open. And it's, oh, they're, it's cool. terrible, terrible. And in fact, when... When the windows are closed, and I don't know if I pointed this out to you before, but when there's 
a a strong breeze, my blinds will will <laughs> yeah in the breeze because these windows are so bad. Mm. So that's probably why we're hearing the birds. <clears throat> Oh, I mean, mm-hmm. that's a good explanation. <laughs> that is. I'm really excited for I you know. and your mm-hmm. new windows. And the birds and the windows. Good for the, everyone. All of and your yeah. neighbors are adorable. Um, hey, can you we know talk what? about I should, Father's I Day? Say, I was going to say, maybe I should say to, to Jeff that that's his Father's Day present, is that I get new, new windows for Father's Day. Because they're coming out this. Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine. Did you get a chance to look at my Father's Day um, gift guide? I did. I added. I hustled it all over Twitter too. Aw, thank you. Um, I added another gift, so it's now thirty gifts for my Father's Day gift guide. Hmm. What is your thirtieth gift? I don't remember. I did. I added it right before. before What did I add? I can't remember what I added. Oh, must have been good. It was. It was awesome. Whatever it was was amazing. Um, I don't. I don't recall what it was. Um, but yeah, it was a really good one. It. I should, I don't know. should we make a pact to where we just don't record episodes within a week of either of us traveling so we actually <laughs> know what's going on because yeah i don't know maybe i i i mean it could it could possibly work that way um but you know this is life erica this is, yeah this is, this is the real thing sure is <laughs> Sure is. And everyone's like, skip 15 seconds. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. On the actual day that's coming up, yes. what are you doing? What are you preparing? What are you making? Okay. Well, so this is what, if my if my father was here, um, I would be making a giant cookie cake. Because mm-hmm. that's his favorite. Although he has lots of favorites. Um, that when, when we have been together for Father's Day in the past, that's what I make for him. And um, I will I will put a link in the um, show notes, and you can see a picture of one of them that I've made for him, where I write on the top of it. But you remember, like in the '80s and the '90s, they had these um, things yeah. in the mall where yeah. you could go and absolutely I, it was like the Great Cookie Company or something like the that. The original Cookie Company. Okay, and and you could go and order those giant, yeah. like they're the size of an extra large pizza. Yeah, that's what it is. So my cookie mix makes one of those plus some extra cookies. And it's like the easiest thing ever. And everyone's happy. And so I just made one actually for my daughter's graduation party. I made that and a cake and some other stuff. And everyone was just going gaga over the the cookie cake. And it could not be easier. It's It's so easy. I love it. My question is, how do you cut it up? You cut it in wedges. Like, like a pie? Like a pie. Okay. And so everyone gets like a slice and you can literally just hold it like a triangle slice. I mean, you could cut it however you wanted to, but that's the way I cut it. Um, and it kind of depends on how many people are there and how big the slices are. But the fun thing is, is you can you can take it, you can make it um, an oatmeal raisin one, or you can make it like a chocolate chip cookie one. You can do either one. I have recipes for it on, on my site for either one. Um there you go, the original cookie. Yep. I mean, that's more of like an eighties version, but in the nineties yeah. they updated. But I spent a lot of time at the mall. So <laughs> I, I do re- I do remember. Like they had too. the heart shaped one yeah. and the round ones mm-hmm. and then the cake looking one. Mm-hmm. But man. Yeah. Stuff so the is only so thing good. you need, I mean, I have a from scratch recipe on my website as well, but the it's easier if you just use the cookie mix, but it's, it's really not complicated if you just do the from scratch recipe. The only thing that you do need, though, is you need a large round pan if you're going to make it look that way. Otherwise, you can make it in a rectangle with like a cookie sheet. So can you make it, though, on like if you had a pizza pan, like the circle yep. pizza pan? Yeah, circle but I wouldn't rec- a circle pan loaf would work, but um, I wouldn't do the one with the holes in it because then it's going to get really crunchy on the bottom of the cookie. Right. Okay, unless, okay. unless you want like a giant okay. Chips Ahoy, um, then you can do no, it that way. I don't want but, that. Ooh, yeah. Um, I wouldn't. I mean, I like it to be chewy. Um, so I, I just, I use the circle pan loaf, mm-hmm. <laughs> circle pan, mm-hmm. and I put parchment down. And the and I'll, I, the recipe that we'll link to will show you. But basically, you you don't spread the dough all the way out to the edges, like where the cookie will ultimately be. You kind of keep it in the middle with like a, a ridge around it of like maybe four inches, and the cookie will spread out some. So you keep it kind of thick in the middle, and it just 
spreads out. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Hmm. And then you can, like I said, you can do an oatmeal raisin or you can do chocolate chip, whatever you want to do. And then you can either frost the whole top of it with icing and then write on it or just write on the top of it or you don't have to write on it at all. But like, it's, it's kind of cool because, you know, guys love cookies. I mean, they just like tend to like cookies. And then to a guy, like, what do they like the best? The biggest of everything, right? They just like, they just, that seems to be like a guy thing. And so it's, it just, it's kind of fun. They, they're like, oh, cool. This is for me. And, and it's delicious. And, That's the oh, best part sure. is it's so good. Your cookie and then makes you can carry it so around good. and you don't even need like a plate. It's, it's great. And you know, it's not too messy. So that's, that's what I would be making if it was here. I'm not making it this weekend because I just made one for graduation. Um, so what we are going to probably do is do a brunch and I'll be making like mm. cinnamon rolls because mm. that's, um, that's another favorite around here. And you're um, making your cinnamon rolls with your, um, just your flour, your, your all purpose yeah. flour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I looked the other day, I, I have six different cinnamon roll recipes on my website. <laughs> I like cinnamon rolls a bit. Just, just a tiny bit. Do you have bit. one that you can make with one of your mixes or are they all using your all purpose flour? Um, they're all using my all purpose flour. However, I have had people because some people don't, um, eat corn and my all purpose flour has corn in it. So my bread mix is corn free. And so I have adapted for people and they've written oh. in and they're like, Oh, can I use the bread mix? I'm like, yes, you can use the bread mix. And then I just came out with the, um, the multigrain, um, biscuit yes. flour, which is also corn free. And so you can use, you can use that as well. So there's just, there's a few different ways of doing it. You just have to measure it, the flour differently, but, um, yeah, they're so good. You can do the cinnamon sticky buns or you can do the regular, like, um, you know, the traditional ones with the frosting on top. I even have a vegan yeast free one that is amazing. It's called my 52 minute cinnamon roll recipe. And it's, when I say 52 minutes, I mean like from start to you're eating it. Yeah, in but 52 like, if minutes. it doesn't have yeast, how does it rise? How does it make it's, this like? It's the it's the baking soda and baking powder. So it's it's still like looks like and and feels like a cinnamon roll, but it doesn't. It's not. It doesn't smell yeasty. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, but it's it's still really super yummy. I mean, everybody loves it, and it's really fast. And and. I call the 52 minute cinnamon rolls, but I have it down to 37 now. I know. Of course you do. Of well, course and you if, do. I mean, if anyone, <laughs> if you're like craving a cinnamon roll and you mine's going to be like an, an hour minutes. and 95 seconds. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, mine would be like so much more than what you were. But it's, it's so minutes. fun to do it and to time yourself. I, I think that's kind of fun. It'd be like, oh, what can I do it in now? Like, but all these doughs are great because you can actually roll them out because my flour is like kind of got stretched to it. So it's like fun to work with it. And then you can put as much or as little filling in it as you want. And so much filling. Oh my God. So much filling. Part. And then you can put the icing on it or not. Um, I'm, I'm like, why would you not put the icing on it? But my husband doesn't want icing on it. It's weird. But people do what they, what they grew up with. Right. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, his mom mm -hmm. never did icing. So yep. he's like, don't put the icing on it. I'm like, okay, fine, yeah. dude. More icing yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. So yeah, cinnamon rolls. There's also um, another really great recipe for something like that. If you're going to do like a brunch is overnight um, French toast casserole. Oh, so yeah. I mm -hmm. don't recommend using um, like store-bought gluten-free bread for many recipes, but it works well for mm -hmm. this one for this. because yeah. it, you can, I like making homemade one because you can slice it thicker, like Texas toast style which is great for this do. recipe, but you could use store-bought and it absorbs the, all the liquid that it's in. And you literally yeah. just take the slices, yeah. lay them in a casserole, pour all this gooey, yummy liquid on top of it. And there's like cinnamon and sugar and other stuff. Then you cover it, stick it in your fridge overnight. And then bake and the it. next morning you just bake it. And, and it's, so it's really, really easy because you can just come downstairs bleary eyed and shove it in the oven and yeah, I did it with bread seriously it's great yeah yeah and and then and then you can use any kind too because you could use like sourdough like you know if maybe I don't know what kind of bread seriously bread you were using but you could do sourdough or you could use like cinnamon mm -hmm. um, um, raisin bread or I mean really any kind that you like and then you just 
slice it up and it's so good. So is it, do you have an egg free version? So originally I did not, but then I have gone back in and modified and given um, different modifications for people. Cause I get that question a lot because French yeah. toast is difficult to make egg free, but there's so many great so vegan hard. substitutes now. Yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely ways to do it. Um, egg free. Yeah. Good. And my favorite is when you, um, when I make this at, at the holidays, because there's all these vegan egg nogs that come out oh, yeah. at the holidays yep. and those yep. work Absolutely. great for that recipe. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. 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 And that there's, there are the flavored egg nogs that are I've vegan done that at the before. holidays. Yeah. Yep. And those are awesome that in that before. recipe. Back yeah. when So Delicious, do you remember when So Delicious first launched the first vegan eggnog? Oh, absolutely. I did that and it was like, oh my God, that was so good. Oh, I know. So good. Mm. Delish. Yeah. Now there's really, even really better really. ones out there, but um, I yeah. just remember that's what I made with that first one. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's, I think there's a, there's a picture of me on that recipe with the original So Delicious nog yeah, probably. next to it. Yeah. I was making it. <laughs> Yeah, because I was like, look, this is so yummy. Yeah, it, it was really yummy. Um, yeah, so that's that's another really great recipe for like a, a holiday brunch. But if you're not doing brunch, the uh, the other thing that I, I love to make, and it doesn't have to be for Father Day. And this actually works really well for um, for July 4th, which we have coming up as well, is homemade hamburger buns. Because, of course, guys love burgers. The homemade hamburger buns are another recipe that I've made oftentimes when we do like a lunch thing for mm -hmm. Father's Day. And those are so easy and so fun to make too. Um, and I have a whole post on my site about different ways to hack that and make them. If you don't have hamburger bun rings or things like that, you can use mason jar lids and stuff. So oh, yeah. we can we can talk more about that later if you want to. Yeah, say What are you going to make? What are you going to make? I don't know. <laughs> There what's, is, your, um, what's your dad? What does your dad love to eat? What is nothing. He, like? he uh, so he, he just got back from Monaco, didn't he? He did, and that's he, astounding to me. It's so um, cool. He has so he has um, blood cancer, so he is on medication that makes him not hungry at yeah. all. So that is very difficult mm -hmm. to do anything with him because I love food and I bring yeah. food and he'll have like a bite and that's it. So he doesn't like really eat a lot of things and he doesn't really like a lot of like overly sweet things. Um, I have made him the cookie cake or not cookie cake, the cookie, the big cookie yeah. that you've done. I have also made him last year. I made a realistic cake that looked like a cigar because he likes cigars. That was super cute. That is so cute. Did yeah. you put fondant on the outside of, of it? Of course. Yeah, of course. It was you and your adorable. Fondant. You're so cute. I do love my fondant. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know. Um, Drink Me Tea Room, which is a dedicated gluten-free vegan tea room, um, has a Hamil tea, like a Hamilton-themed tea service for Father's Day. And I'm like, I wonder if I could go and he mm -hmm. would enjoy that. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't know if I really want to go if he's not going to enjoy it. I yeah. don't really know. It's always so hard to tell, like, what is going to go over well and what isn't. Yeah. So I don't know yet, but I'll, um, I'm sure I'll post it online <laughs> if I figure something out. That's cool. I'm sure you'll figure something out. It'll be fun. He just wants to spend time with you. That's what Father's Day is about. Yeah, it's just hard because I love food so much. So yeah. I'm like, here's the, my gift of love that I have baked with love and it's food. And he's like, I don't really want this. It's he, hard. I mean, it's hard with anyone. love to watch you eat it. <laughs> yeah. Look, Erica, Erica has food she can eat. I'd love to watch her yeah, eat that's it. that's all I need is to eat another cake. So, yeah. yay. Yeah, well, you know, that's fine. Grilled veggie platter for Father's Day. Perfect. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I will look forward to seeing your post. I know. I kind of just want to go to Hamilton by myself, even if he doesn't want to go with me, because it sounds amazing. It does sound amazing. I would love that. Yeah. I'll go with uh, you. Yeah. Gluten-free <laughs> vegan tea room, man. It's the best. I love it. I went for my birthday and I take my mom for Mother's Day. I mean, it's just incredible. Just because I love really it. Cool. Everything is small size and bite size and on the tea, the three tiered tea platter mm -hmm. and every there's like different tea for all. Oh my God. It's so good. So that good. sounds amazing. I would yeah. love a place like that. I wish they had some place yeah. like that in Baltimore, but no. East Coast. Sorry. I know. You can get to Paris quicker. <laughs> Just have to sh shoot over to Paris. Just shoot to get some macarons. It's like a macaron. I know. Those are fun. I like those. Yeah, you I saw macarons you eating them. For, for your dad. 
Never meet him. Never yeah. meet him. I mean, there's several steps, but it's not hard. The main thing that I wanted to talk about today is... Oh, you mean 40 minutes into our podcast, you finally have <sighs> started to discuss the main thing you want to talk about today? Well, we kind of, we kind of talked about Father's Day last week, but... Um, I, I really just wanted, I wanted to mention to all of the listeners who um, maybe weren't aware of it, um, but also the fact that, um, you know, people might still be thinking about these things now that school is winding down, um, is that there are gluten-free summer camps out there that are mm-hmm. still taking registrations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I just went through and updated my listing on my website. It's called Gluten-Free Summer Camps for Kids. And I, it's an evergreen post, so it's up all the time. But um, I went and updated it for 2023 and double-checked. And there are, I think there's 18 summer camps that are listed on yeah. my post. Yeah. And they're all around the country. And the ones that are listed right on my website There's only one that is, I think it's happening like right now. All the rest of them are in July and August. Mm -hmm. So there's still Mm -hmm. time. Some Mm -hmm. of them um, may be full, but like one of them said it was full, but they'd reserved 10 spots for scholarships. So there are, they call them camperships. So there's still time for people to apply. And um, it's a really cool opportunity because a lot of people are afraid to send their kid to camp because of the dietary issues, Mm -hmm. especially for the little guys. You know, you're worried that they don't know what they're looking out for and they don't know, you know, how to take care of themselves. And these camps are, you know, it's a normal summer camp and they'll just have like a gluten-free week. And so these are, these are really cool things that are out there and you should take advantage of it if there's someplace near you or you have the, the means or the ability to get your kid to someplace else. Yeah. And I, I do want to stress each camp works differently. Yeah. So there are, there are many, as Jules said, at least 18 to 20 summer camps that happen that are for gluten-free kids. <laughs> now there are some that are dedicated gluten-free. Um, there are some that are like Camp Blue Spruce is 100% gluten-free and food allergy friendly, okay? But then there's camps like um, Gilmont that has a great gluten escape that is totally 100% gluten-free that entire week. Then there are um, gluten-free friendly weeks that happen at camps to where there will be someone there cooking separate gluten-free meals, have Mm gluten-free snacks available, so you you have to inquire on how each camp is run as far as like if you want only a gluten-free week where there are only gluten-free kids there and no one else will be attending, that's the week that you choose or the camp that you choose because each camp does work differently. And remember, some of these are run by YMCA, some of these are run by church. So if you don't want like a church camp, stay away from the church camps. Like <laughs> that's the thing is like some of these I saw and I'm like, e, I am not religious. So I don't know if I want my kid to attend like a Christian summer camp that happens to have a gluten-free week or like, I, I just don't, you know, like there yeah. are, you really have to look into this, but the good news is, is that there are spots that are so friendly to kids who have food allergies or who are gluten-free. Um, and that's really exciting because that means that they can go to summer camp just like everybody else and they don't need to feel special. They don't need to, I mean, every child is special, but they don't need need to to feel feel different. different. Right. And they don't need to feel like nobody else understands me what's going on right right now. Or like, I have to go to the nurse's office to get my special meal. Like we don't want that. So, um, I know that. And like, and there's like companies like my company, we donate food Mm -hmm, to these mm -hmm. camps. So like we'll donate that cookie mix that I just talked about. We'll donate pancake mix. We donate graham cracker mix, you know, to a lot of these camps. And so they do have really, really great food that's available to these kids. So it's Mm -hmm. not like, you know, it's safe. First of all, you know, you have to inquire if some of these, like, like Erica said, some of these are not totally dedicated, but they do a really good job of trying to separate everything out, but they also have really yummy stuff. And, um, so these kids do feel special, but they mm-hmm. feel not different. And then they make a gluten-free friend. Maybe they, you know, stay friends. And, um, and meanwhile, food isn't the focus of their life, which maybe for the mm-hmm. first time in a long time, that's different for them. They can focus on kayaking or, you know, whatever. They're not focused on, you know, how am I going to eat today? That's yeah. separate, you know? So that's really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's um, it's it's something that. So I never went to summer camp. Did you go to summer camp? Oh heck yeah, but I wasn't celiac at the time. Well, neither was I. But I yeah. have not even been to summer camp because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I was a. I was a child that was ready for real human interaction away from my parents. Um. So I never. Yeah, no, I camp. loved summer camp. I loved it. I was like, could not wait to go to summer camp. Yeah. I went. And in fact, one of these camps, it's so cool. It's in North Carolina. It's called Camp Canada. I actually went yeah, there. Yeah. 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 Oh my um, God. That's so funny. Isn't it funny? Um, yeah. I went to a bunch of different summer camps. Um, now I maybe, went to Maybe band- my parents wanted to get rid of me. I, don't know, I went to like, band camp every summer. Does that count? One time but it was, in band camp? Yes. But it was, <laughs> but it was at a university. Like I was not uh-huh. camping anywhere. Mm-hmm. There were not lodges. Like we had rooms, you know, yeah. like dorm rooms. Yeah. So I, I never have been to like an outside outdoors camp, which is, <laughs> I guess, fits. It's fitting for who I am today. And I'm yeah. thankful my parents didn't like force me to go to camp yeah. because I would have been miserable and I would have been that kid that cried every time. Um, but uh, yeah, so I I get like being away from your parents and like trying to make new friends and like that's stressful enough as it is. And like trying to be safe, you know, that would yeah. be extra stressful. But yeah. this, they try to take that part away so you can just focus on like, who am I outside of my parents? Mm-hmm. How can I make new friends? Can I mm-hmm. learn new activities? So yeah. I, I, I think it's amazing. Um, Twin Cities Rock is another one. Um, yeah, they're all over. You yeah, know, Georgia, all over. Rhode Island, and Washington State, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Like so, if yeah, if you're at all interested in this opportunity for your kiddo, definitely check out my post and um, hop through to the links because um, there may still be an opportunity for you to apply and maybe even get a scholarship. Mm-hmm. So, and some of these fill up so quickly, yeah. like like uh, they fill up in as soon as it launches in like April or May. So well, some if, of them, the registration opens in February. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just depends on the camp and, and how popular it is. So like, if you yeah. are really interested in doing this for your kid, make sure that you have an idea of when registration opens. Yeah. Um, Cause that's huge. And then also some of them I've looked at, at some of them and some of them are thousands upon thousands of dollars. And uh, maybe start looking at saving up for next summer because yeah. I looked at some of these and I'm like, wow. And then yeah. again, what is money when you're a child? Like, I don't remember how much my parents spent on sending me away to camp. It may have been the same amount of money. I have no idea because as a kid, you're just like, whatever, you know? No, you just went to band camp, so it wasn't that much. <laughs> it was so expensive. We stayed in dorms, girlfriend. I'm just teasing. I yeah, know. I mean, you're, you're paying for food, for lodging, for insurance, yeah. for all mm-hmm. these things. I mean, like, I went to sailing camp. Like, they had to pay for all of the Who sailboats and all. Sailing camp? It was so fun. And then I, I learned to be a sailing instructor. And then when I was in college, I taught I, in the summer, I was a sailing instructor. Who are so you? Like... I have no idea. I had no <laughs> idea about any of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we should talk sometime. We should get to know each other. I feel like I'm talking to a totally new person. I had no idea that you went to sailing camp. Yeah. I, I mean, I grew up in North Carolina. I was like, you know. That has water around it? It has water. It touches water. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It must, yeah. That's unique. Yeah. I've never been in a state that has water. Tell me more yeah. about this. <laughs> Tell me more of this water. You speak of. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it doesn't get to be 100 degrees either. Huh. That's but it's weird. very humid. It's very humid. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's gross. And there's we have pine and trees stuff. and squirrels. And bugs. And wabbits. <laughs> so many bugs. <laughs> Did I mention yeah. the bugs? Yeah, yeah. Just mm-hmm. giant. We do bugs. have bugs. We do have yeah, bugs. Yeah, sounds horrible. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, I learned something new about you today, which is mm-hmm. shocking. Honestly, yeah. I'm shocked. So the yeah. moral of the story is: check out camps. If you can't make it this summer, don't worry because in just a few months they'll open up registration for summer of 2024. <laughs> Save up those mm-hmm. dollars because your kids are going to need it because camps are expensive. And um, hopefully you get to a camp where Jules has donated her cookie mix. So <laughs> your kids get to experience uh, GF Jules cookies. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, this has been another episode of You Had Me Eat. I need to go um, cry in a corner or something. I don't really know. Jules needs to go to her yacht, uh, her yacht <laughs> club to give some sailing dreams. instructions. Yeah. And um, she needs to get back on uh, 
U.S. time. Yes. And the next time that we speak, we can talk about Paris because you'll have um, a blog post and we'll have more to share. Yes. We'll talk about Italian food in Paris. <laughs> so random, man. I love it's it. Super random. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. It's been fun to talk, and we hope that you um, have a wonderful Father's Day, and we can't wait to hear about what you baked for Father's Day. So do share in uh, the comments or reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. We are here for you and look forward to uh, chatting. Bye, guys. Bye.